Hey guys, it might seem like I'm posting a great beautiful picture of America and, and everything is all beds of roses. But I'll be as honest as I can with you. There's a solid reason why even though H1B is so restrictive, why people are facing problems every day, why people are not happy even though H4 is being revoked, then also people are not moving to India. And that reason is money. Uh, if a person is on H1B, he has to have a salary of 65,000 and above. And $65,000 is not less money. Like honestly, every person who's coming or who's being outsourced from India wouldn't be making anything closer to 65,000. Even if you'll remove rent, even if you'll remove food, they can save up a solid chunk of money if they don't have spouses or even if they have spouses, you can save up a lot of money and then send it back to India. And that is the reason why people are still here even after not getting green cards, even after not getting promotions in their jobs. So it comes to a really personal level that what do you really want and do you want the money and comfort or do you want to go back to India earn less but your family is there and you might be more happy. So it just comes to that and that's my thoughts on it. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock and talk about what I mentioned in the previous video. There are mainly these cohorts, undergrads, grad, postgraduates, H1B and spouses. And they are on these visas, F1, H1B, H4. There are 85,000 H1Bs given per year out of which 20,000 is booked for master students and 6,800 are reserved for residents of Chile and Singapore. Remaining 58, 1,200 are being extremely exploited by Indian IT companies. You can apply for cap exempt H1B and I'll make a video about it. All right, back to the normal video. Let's, let's talk about why STEM is important. Um, STEM is science, technology, engineering and math. And why STEM courses and why people are, who are taking STEM courses is important for this country. A 2011 study from the American Enterprise Institute and the Partnership for a New American Economy showed the economic effects of legal immigration. The study looked at job creation resulting from immigration, both through green cards and temporary workers visa from 2007 to 2010. Each of these categories had outstanding job creation characteristics. For every 100 additional immigrant workers with advanced STEM degrees from US universities, an additional 262 jobs were created for native born American workers. For every 100 additional highly skilled temporary workers, that is H1B, an additional of 183 jobs were created for native born American workers. According to studies and according to people, increasing the number of green cards and reducing the stress of getting to them for these advanced STEM degree courses and for the people who are doing these STEM courses will increase jobs and should be put on a high priority. And this is just not me saying. An infinite number of people coming who are taking jobs that pay over 100,000 a year. You know, they're gonna pay taxes. We create lots of other jobs. You know, my, my basic view is that the country should welcome as many of those people as we can get. But these people would not have difficulty getting into other rich countries. In fact, you know, countries like Canada and Australia have been beneficiaries of our uh, system discouraging these people with both the limits and the the long waits and the, the, what the process feels like uh, as, as they go through the security checks. But the truth is that for direct employment of high-skilled people like Didi coming out of American schools, they ought to get green cards directly because having green cards has the kind of freedom that was described to be able to choose your employer and change your employer. Unfortunately, despite lots of pressure, companies have preferred to have control over the workforce through the H-1B. Let's take another question. Why immigration is important for this country? With current immigration rate in the US, US will be short of over 11 million private sector worker by 2020. And restrictive immigration policy will have negative impact on the quality of individuals that immigrate to the US. And this has been proved previously. In 2003, there was a limit set to H-1B approvals. And in the same year, they saw a high decrease in number of US applications that year. Now let's talk about what is going on one by one. If you're an undergrad student, should you be worried about it directly? Well, not really because you have three years of OPT plus STEM extension. 
the only thing which you should be worried about is the H1B because you get three chances instead of six chances as compared to the master's student. So the one thing which I'll recommend is go and find jobs in areas which are gap exam and I'll make a video on completely that as well but that will be beneficial for you. Now if you're a master's student which I know most of you guys are or if you're coming for master's should you be worried about it? Not directly but there are ways which are affecting you right now. Number one is that the companies who are hiring uh, they also look at all of these things that H1B is going to get reformed and we'll have issues. So they get skeptical while hiring international students. And because a lot of times uh, those are not the HR people who know about all of this. They are the people who are on the technical sides of the company. They are engineers, they are project managers. And these people do not about the annual details of how H1B works, how STEM extension is there with our courses. So the solution to this is that you will have to explain it to them. Just be clear to them. I will not need H1B for the first three years and uh, I have my STEM extension and OPT which gives me three years of visa to work with you. So just be clear about it if they ask you a question that would you need sponsorship? So you should say no that I don't need sponsorship directly because you don't need sponsorship for the first three years. PhD students, uh, you don't really have to worry about because you will be put into EV1 category which is untouched with all of this mess. If you are a person on H1B, yes, you will face problem. And if you're a person already on H1B, you already know that there are more requests for evidence. There are lesser renewal of your H1B and more decline rates over this period of time. So yes, there are problems for H1B, but mainly for the people who are coming directly uh, from India and who are being outsourced by IT companies. If you're a spouse of a person who's on H1B, then you will be given a visa called H4. And yes, that has been created a problem because that's the first thing which will go. In 2015, work authorizations were given to 100,000 people uh, who were on H4 visa. And for all the spouses, Trump wants to reform that visa, so he might just scrape it completely. And that hasn't been out yet, but we are expecting it to happen in February or March. And yeah, it's sad because then the spouses who have degrees from great universities in India, who have skills, who have worked in India, can't work just because of the whole visa mess up. Now you may ask me or ask an immigration lawyer that whose mistake is this? Uh, is it because of us a lot of immigrants are coming here or is it because of the people who are coming who are getting outsourced by TCS Wipro? I'll tell you the real culprit here is the IT companies which has sent thousands and thousands of people to US and exploited the H1B system. Now if you're putting in like 30,000 applications, 40,000 applications from one single companies and then outsourcing people that will create problem eventually. That bubble has to burst somewhere. And even the people who are on H1B and being outsourced by these companies are not really happy. First of all, they're restricted. They can't work in different companies. They'll have to work in one company. Their spouses can't work until and unless they have authorization or until and unless their green card is in process and their I-140 is in approval. And they can't even visit India if their H1B is under review or is under renewal so if anything happens in that phase and if you get a rejection on your h1b then you can't even come back to india so that creates a huge problem so i'd like to conclude this video that it's the system is a little broken and everybody and everything i've read shows that People who are doing STEM courses will be benefited. There will be changes over time for the green cards as well that more green cards will be offered to people who have done courses from US universities and that should be it. I'll keep you guys updated with more news about this. With any changes, I'll make more videos about it. And this is a small explanation of what's going on and how you can see changes later on. Thank you so much guys for watching. It took me three days of research to write everything down to make sure that everything is clear and right on point. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. 
again thank you so much guys for watching and until then i'll see you in the next one